Okay, but, well, you know, we whatever. can start. Quest Protein is fitness related. Everyone, everyone here has had a Quest Protein bar at one time or another. They are special amongst Gross. the uh, low carb protein bars. I don't, I don't like Quest Protein bars. Don't you do the cookies? No, you do the complete cookie. No, you do the. I did Lenny and Larry's for a while. Yeah, and then that's when I got to like two twenty because it turns yeah. out. He, it turns out he was just doing regular cookies. <laughs> turns out if you don't, you know, if you don't track those you cookies they do yeah yeah man when i was when i deadlifted 600 i was at like 220 <laughs> <laughs> yeah mass moves mass that's fucking wild yeah, nice. yeah. I w- my I w- joints hurt a lot and now then. you're at like a, a shredded why are you holding the microphone like so fancy because i'm i know i'm gonna switch up i'm gonna be here at oh okay point. Yes. and at one point i might just be here <laughs> yes now you're at what like a, a shredded uh 187 or no, i'm at uh 200 i still haven't gotten under 200 yet but we're Damn, right there dude. 202 look at you 200 and 0.2 pounds who'd have thought i think the the last time i weighed myself i was 255 so i'm just going to assume that i'm still 255 right i think that now. sounds about that right sounds you look 255, 255. minus 50-ish pounds yeah, so I was probably say, you're, probably, you're probably you're probably like, like 210 is. Yeah. 205 maybe uh, i weighed myself this morning mm-hmm. 198 pounds yeah lean mean muscle is it weird not being a man anymore yeah i was at 200 pounds for a long time i don't know what happened to drop me underneath i think i just i worked out like a haircut apparently i I worked out twice this week and that did it yes i I think it's that haircut haircut, honestly (laughs) actually you're right (laughs) there's probably about 10 pounds you lose the strength (gasps) with the hair just like Like samson Samson. Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. it's armenian samson there's a jewish samson and armenian uh, samson we never knew about him that's right that's right cutting my hair it, it actually has a direct impact on reducing my penile volume mm-hmm. yeah so we all know about that mm-hmm. yeah that's so, why i keep growing it out that's why none of you have cut your hair in so long circumference yeah. pie that's right pie <laughs> that'd suck if that was the case i saw an ad a fake uh no i didn't i saw a meme that's <laughs> that said a one-time bee sting may enlarge your penis forever and then like it was the Thanos. It was the Thanos. It was the like the small cost for salvation or something like that. <laughs> on so your immediately yeah. I filled my pockets with honey and went running into a field Let's full go of take flowers. Take off into the into the weeds. Let's do this. Let's do this. Hornets, mm-hmm. bees, whatever. Let's do this. Hornets, <laughs> whatever. I can almost guarantee you, if you let bees sting you all over your penis, it will get bigger. <laughs> yeah, but it stays. It will happen. That was the thing. It said it stayed. I don't know if it'll stay. But what what scientific what's the uh, what's the scientific method for determining that one? Like, mm. do they have like a whole well, you have a cohort of people? <laughs> They're like, uh, you know, we're gonna sting your dick, mm-hmm. and then these are bees, and mm-hmm. these are hornets, and we're yeah. gonna see whether the hornet stings are permanent changes or the bee mm-hmm. stings are permanent changes. Well, it's pretty easy. You know, you may, the, of course, the measure is uh, water displacement for the size of the dick that <laughs> that's right. comes after that. So you measure, Eureka. so you would measure, uh, so you would measure, you know, water displacement mm-hmm. of the both flaccid and erect penis before mm-hmm. and after the bee and hornet stings. Water and then maybe displaced. one week later, just to see how long the sting. Now the, that's uh, what I call an flaccid. Archimedes screw. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> fuck all you guys. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about water displacement, but there's a very serious documentary on Netflix where they talk about attaching a penis circumference measure uh-huh. to you to measure how your how hard your erections are. Is that really a serious a vegan... documentary, though? Mm-hmm. It's not a serious documentary, but they'll have you believe it. Oh, I... I... <laughs> Yes, I don't think the vegan experiment was serious, but yes, the thing that measures how how hard your penis is is very very useful to see if your if I- images flash in front of your face to see if you're gay or not. Oh. They can tell if you're gay. Yeah. Oh yes. Oh yes. Who's they? Wait, did you? you <laughs> yeah. Who's the Who's the conspiratorial actually, actually, no, they? In it's this not. It's not. It's not. Uh, various various experiments just done with both men and women, <laughs> you, just flashing images in front of their faces to see what makes them aroused, and people say ahead of time. Are you heterosexual, bisexual, homosexual? We'll see if you're telling the truth, and we do. We'll and every time really, they really did. every time at the conclusion of the experiment, they wheel out like a 16 year old boy from high school. And he's like, "Your mom gay," and then that's the end of the experiment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you get? No, you guys didn't watch Watchmen, but that experiment reminds me of Watchmen. Their interrogation system that they have. They, mm-hmm. they got this guy that has like a mirror face mask, and he like. He's able to tell if you're racist or like a, a bad guy by like flashing images in this fucking cool ass dome thing. Mm-hmm. And he's like, it's like the speed of light that's all happening, all these different images. And he's like, 
that guy's a fucking racist. I can tell. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like what what you're proposing. Yes, yeah, so we I need to get you that mask. You need to get well that the measure like whatever that tool is that goes around your penis. You mm-hmm. need to get that, but for your brainstem. Yeah, yeah, for your brainstem. The hardness of your the brain is going to tell me. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> if you're thinking about something hard, the brainstem gets thicker. We all know that. So I That's cut my hair, guys. <laughs> you did. So why'd you no do that? more mullet? So I don't, mm-hmm. I no longer have a mullet. It was very long. It yes. was like down to my collarbones. Yes, and uh, it needed to go. So now I have this hairdo. Yes. And I'm the only one at this table without the ability to put my hair into a bun of some sort. But you could put it into pigtails if you wanted. Yes. I guess tiny I could put it into ones. tiny little tiny pigtails. Tiny little pigtails yes. right at the top, bunched up in the top corners And your quite head. frankly, you might as well now that you cut your hair off. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give people easy handlebars there, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. I, went, I went to the, the um, salon and it was quite the process. Mm. I mean, they provided... Did they sanitize all of your hairs individually? I think they did. Good. So did we, have. did we go to the same salon? Yeah. yeah I okay. Kate, so yeah. I, I want to hear went, what the process is now if it's changed. So all. I I walked in and uh, I, 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 well, first I had to get there and then text them. They didn't just let me in. The door's locked. <laughs> so you text them and then they let confirm. Me they confir- <laughs> let me in. They confirm that it's you. And then and not they, someone else not there someone for else. a haircut. Yeah, and then they they <laughs> unlock the door. They let you in. You have to uh, take your stuff and put it into like a little bin. Mm-hmm. And then they uh, sanitize your hands. They you take your mask off and put it into the bin. They give you a new mask. Mm-hmm. And then they give you a smock to wear. And then they like move you over to your station. And uh, during the hair washing portion. It's it's silent. You're not allowed mm-hmm. to talk. You're not allowed to talk to each other during the the hair washing portion of the, the salon. No point, because your head is pointed up. Is that the I, idea? Maybe, maybe, perhaps that's what it is. Mm-hmm. But uh, other than that, I mean, it was it was a pretty. I had to sign a waiver. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, a, yeah. It was, yeah. It, it was an in depth. It was an in depth process. That sounds. Um, that's that's pretty much the same thing I went through. Except after you um, take off your mask, I had to get into a microwave. Oh, and they okay. microwave me for thirty seconds. Yeah, luckily that 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 uh, front and back it didn't rotate. Okay, good. They, they well. put you into a room full of black lights. You listen to Inagata <laughs> Devita for a while, and then they tell you that you don't got the COVID no more. <laughs> you walk in a circle three times. It's all about equally as effective. I mean, it's all security theater, so it doesn't really matter. Sanitation theater, I guess we should call it. That, that being said, I did feel pretty safe when yeah. I went there, other yeah. than the microwave. Yeah. But yeah, they they seem buttoned up. I would have felt safer with the microwave. <laughs> Well, personally speaking only so much you mm-hmm. can do yeah but either way uh, i do have this now um shorter hair. shorter hair and i i like it i mm-hmm. enjoy it i'm not i'm not i'm not i'm not, I'm not pissed about it i chose this mm-hmm. i felt like you had it's a style and slip just now it almost you almost said i'm not pumped about it i heard it it, it was at the <laughs> at the cusp no, of actually, your lips i actually really do like it i actually really do like it nice uh <laughs> it, i think it came out really nice my hair was very very long beforehand and very greasy because i never washed it mm-hmm. and uh it was getting a little out of control i knew it was time to cut my hair because Katie, who has supported me in having ridiculous hair for so long, mm-hmm. was actively asking me, hey, so what are you doing with this? <laughs> what is this? Yeah. 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 And uh, at that point, I think it was pretty clear that, that there just was not going to be mm-hmm. a future for whatever my hair was doing at yeah. that moment. Is, but will the mullet ever make a return? That was the second time I've rocked a mullet. Mm-hmm. So, so far, I've done two mullets and two buns. So really, to bring the, past, the like, to bring the story to a years. close, you know you have to do it at least one. The more trilogy time. must be complete yeah, at some point. Right. Uh, mm. But right now, I, I do have a plan. Mm-hmm. This is this is stage one. You're doing plan A of where we're going. Yeah, let's not. I'm, I hopefully don't have to get into plan B. But <laughs> you know, plan A is going to stick around here. Nice. Uh, this is stage one. Mm-hmm. The reference photo that I gave uh, Kate, my hairstylist. Also, Chase's hairstylist mm-hmm. Sick. is uh, a picture of Joe Magnianello. Magnia, Magnia. Ma- mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He, he, 
He Joe of the big M. penis in movies. Yes, yeah. Yes. Big Joe. Joe big Maganello. Joe. Joe Maganello. However you pronounce his last name. Yeah. And uh, I was I showed her a picture. Basically, you I just, showed. You showed, basically, just showed her a picture of, of Joe Maganello, and you're like, "Isn't this nice? Yeah. Like, yeah. wouldn't it be awesome I if sh- I looked like this well, guy?" And, I, and she's and like, I, "I guess it would." Now, can I cut your fucking hair? I it, told her. It, you it's like those control. Hollywood personal trainers when every Hollywood star brings them in a picture of Brad Pitt from Fight Club and says, mm-hmm. "I want to look like this." And Brad Pitt was the other photo I showed her. And that wasn't a joke. That's a direct. That's she, a statement. She just pocketed part, that the one. The sad part is Joe Manganiello's hair wasn't even in the photo he showed. It was, <laughs> it was just, just like chin down. down. It was all torso. And then she got uncomfortable, and then Armin just sat down, and they cut their hair in silence, like because know. it was required. It's actually yeah. a picture of him as a wolf from mm-hmm. True Blood. Yeah, I, 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 I <laughs> told her. It, 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 you feel. I feel really silly. I don't think there's any way to do that and not feel silly to be uh-huh. like, here's here's a picture of, uh, you know, the most manufacturedly handsome human yes. beings on the face of the planet. Make my hair look like them. That's true. And uh, she actually she actually set me up for success, I think, because yeah. the, the hairstyle is it's going to get there. It's going to be yeah. dope. I'm excited about it. Sick, man. Is this like a multi-phase process? I guess I don't know how hair works. It grows. Okay. And then uh, and then it's probably going to grow past where it needs to grow, and then I'm going to trim it back into mm. where. It, so really, the 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 rub here is the little sidesies that I've so, got need to grow a little bit gotcha. longer, gotcha. so I can continue tucking back as this layer continues growing down. So mm-hmm. it's going to be a little bit longer in the back, and then the top is going to keep getting longer on top of it. It's going to be a layered multi week process so and during the same period you're going to first add all of the manganiello mass and correct then you're gonna sh- when, mm-hmm. the, when you get the haircut mm-hmm. you're going to shred yourself out so you have that yeah. that true blood that true blood magic correct. mike xxl leanness there we got to get you over 200 pounds first of all yeah you know the the other two photos i said like like, like i said i showed her um joe magnanello magnanello mm-hmm. magnanello magnanello <laughs> brad brad <laughs> pitt <laughs> and then uh the third one the hail mary the if these two don't work out was actually mm-hmm. jake chillenhall <laughs> Was oh. it? Was it? It actually was a photo and from Nightcrawler, of Jake yeah. Gyllenhaal. And, it was just uh, a dream, Armin. Let it go. And, All uh, right, you don't have to prove anything to Jake Gyllenhaal. No, Jake Armin. and I have. You don't have anything a to prove. Very strong feud going on right now. Uh, we haven't. Heart. We haven't even spoken. So I know. it is. It's, it's very sad. painful. He's not lying. He and Jake Gyllenhaal have not spoken once since this feud began. Yeah, it's, it's really painful. Wow. It's really painful. Yes. So I'm hoping that eventually we can get over it and, mm-hmm. and get back to our lives. But at this point, I, I honestly don't know what he can do to redeem himself. Mm-hmm. It, it was, it's really, really challenging for me right now. Uh, and yet, uh, not unlike Norman Bates, you're beginning to dress like Jake Gyllenhaal and really start to live in. You're trying to become your abuser is what's mm-hmm. happening. In right a way. Now. Yeah, in a way. I know. It's I, psychologically taxing. Did I ever tell you that me and Joe Maganello were, uh, were represented by the same modeling agency oh yeah yeah Yeah, man my only experience with joe maganello before that point was true blood i was like this dude's badass (laughs) i went to doherty agency in Uh pittsburgh pennsylvania Uh because that's in west virginia that's like your closest thing you're going to get to like a legit modeling agency and uh walk through the door and like his pictures are like plastered throughout because he's like their big big dude and i was like oh fuck like this guy, that could be me too. Yeah, a different so path. Obviously, I had you, a lot of opportunities to, get on your to work for HBO. Show. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I just missed the I just missed the werewolf vampire show calling. It could have been me. I yeah. know, man. Well, first Minus of all, first difference. of all, Chase, expand that story a little bit more. So you went to a modeling agency. Then what happened? Did you go on any modeling? Did you things? not know this about Chase? No, not no, really. No, no. Not in any with <laughs> not with any detail. Yeah, yeah. So so I signed with them for like. Uh I don't know. The the last three years of college. So like on weekends, if I wasn't at a wrestling match, I would go and do like, like they did a lot of in-store appearances Mm -hmm. at like Pittsburgh places and then like a whole bunch of website photo photography. Mm -hmm. Uh, American Eagle is like headquartered there. So they do a lot of shoots with them. And like an Armani, uh, not exchange, but the the next level up of Armani. Armani XXL. Collection. I think. Oh, okay, <laughs> but uh, I did a lot of that Sounds shit. Fancy. It was uh, nice. it was interesting. It was a wild right. time. I would have liked to have done acting, but I didn't yes. realize 
that you had to be like more invested. <laughs> you had to put a lot <laughs> more money into it. They're like, you got to go do this photo book and then we can book you on more stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm never going to go do that. That sounds stupid. It's a lot of work. Like, you got to wear tights and, All right. and fucking pleather shirts. Single weirdest modeling story, Chase. Go. What happened? Oh, fuck. Did someone take advantage of you? Uh, no, but we... The- <laughs> Was it Brett Ratner? Yes. Uh, we were at, at an Armani store. It was like a big opening for it. And there was a big ass uh, professional, like old school hockey player there. Mm-hmm. I forget what his fucking name is. Like he was a big name in like the Pittsburgh area. I'm trying to think of what his name is. It wasn't Wayne Gretzky. That's all I know. Mm-hmm. It was a di- I was gonna say, is it Wayne Gretzky? But he, but he was like a big just deal. Call him Mr. Penguin. He was a big deal in the uh, hockey community, and I just remember having to be like his mm-hmm. bitch for like the whole evening. Not like I had to do anything like sexual, but like he'd be like, "I, I need a drink," chase. and I'd be like, "What's up? I got drinks," and he'd be like, "I need uh, another fucking." Edie thing and i'd be like i got you a little bakery thing what's up <laughs> yeah so that was awkward so you're just basically a waiter i was a waiter okay, a nice looking fine. waiter for a hockey player i was like yeah, why yeah. do hockey players need nice looking waiters mm-hmm. and i don't know i didn't question it past that he that was one of my last jobs anything, right? <laughs> i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> do, we, do we have to find some sort of like a uh a... Psychologist to hypnotist to put you under to probably get the true story out of you. Probably, mm. no. Yeah, I remember lack of teeth. I remember he was he was massive. I had no idea how big hockey players were. I was a I was a college wrestler. I was like I'm probably pretty. I'm probably the most jacked dude here. And then like I walked in and it was just like, <laughs> well, the fuck do you guys skate? How did, how's yeah, this kind of crazy, right? You They're guys like are football doing players soccer, on but on ice. Yeah. <laughs> you just can develop a lot of inertia on those skates. It's imagine, like rugby on ice. Imagine that just hurtling towards you fast in a world with no friction on the ground to protect you or to slow him down at all. In a sport where fist fights are not just legal, but encouraged. Yeah, just, yeah man. Uh, if we were trying to make an elite race of warriors, like I would start with hockey mm, players. Start probably. with the Canadians. Like hockey players and then roller derby girls and just let's make mm-hmm. it happen. I mean, there's. I don't think it's a. It's a an accident that some of the best uh, CrossFitters were hockey players. Mm. Tim Paulson. Tim That's Paulson. the only one I can think of. Pat Vellner. Pat Vellner has, has has hit a puck every now and then, but he played lacrosse. Yeah. So he played hockey, but on grass. Mm-hmm. Dear God. And uh, he played hockey, but on grass. <laughs> God, I can't remember who else. Joe Scally, our boy Joe. Well, he's from Canada. Yeah. I just like assumed if Joe was like. What what's the what's like the minor league of professional hockey? He was in that. Oh, sick! I'm pretty sure. So baseball or college, college hockey player, something like that. But yeah, mm. yeah, hockey players are fucking wild. I could take him. Yeah, man. <laughs> Scally, Scally's made of glass. Of course, you could take him. <laughs> Speaking of ice, it's 106 degrees in Austin today. Yeah, it's very hot. <laughs> it's very hot. And it was but, 106 degrees yesterday. It's, it, it's it might drop over, to 100 tomorrow. Has I don't it been know. over? It's been over 100 degrees every day this week, huh? Yeah, for sure. I, I think, think so. Yeah. I've I've ran I've ran in it I've worked out in it it's, yeah. not, it's not too bad you yeah. can enjoy it if you get out early enough I find there's just that period I, I like go four like, or five I go right during the oh, hardest really? part of the hardest day, part of like the day. two to three and you're like doing what jogging what uh, well sun in my butthole oh perfect. and then and, so. and then doing aerobic capacity so okay. you know like intervals and sprint work and bullshit word word I don't mind it. Yeah, it's yeah, fine. Yeah. Just reminds me of like a wrestling room. It's like I have to be in pain and suffering. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working out, obviously. Otherwise, it doesn't count. I had a very, I had a very, very, very like, uh, do not give a fuck cavalier attitude about that when I was younger, and I would like go running in the hottest part of the day in, um, you know, uh, in Texas and do all that. And then I began to notice that weirdly when i would start doing it as i got a little bit older like later on that evening i would just get really sick in the evening Jesus. afterwards like stomach would hurt head would hurt would start to feel woozy i'm like oh did i eat something what's wrong then i would go out in the heat again on another day and then later on just feel really fucking sick and i was this i don't think this is a good thing i'm I don't doing know, man. Anymore. correlation does not equal causation yeah 100 so, percent. probably just um, weren't absorbing the sun that's right, right. well as I, I must have been getting too many heat shock proteins I, that's exactly been the thing so I needed to, to go pl- in situations like that. You have to actually plug your butthole before there you go outside. I should have just plunged directly into an ice bath afterwards. <laughs> I've got one in the, in the this backyard. Is true. What got you, one in the yard? What race is Superman? Is it what's what's the Kryptonian? Name of Kryptonian. Kryptonian. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you got to be Kryptonian. That's this the main thing you're fucking up right there. Oh. Sonny, you can't leave, buddy. You have to stay in here. You decided to stay in here. You have to stay in here. <laughs> Hello, Sonny. Yeah, he's Kryptonian. You're you're not trapped in here with me. Wait. 
Fuck. I'm not the trapped other, in here with you. Yeah, it's the other way around. It's the other way around. <laughs> it'd, be fun, it'd be funny if Rorschach delivered that backwards. It's like, you're not trapped in here with me. I'm trapped in, in here, here with you. you. <laughs> Very uh, different. <laughs> he was help, sad when he died. Help. Uh, uh, I guess he was sad when he died, in a way. I don't I don't know. I think he was filled... In reality, how he actually dies? Yeah, he was t- he was done with it. He was like, "Fucking kill me! I don't want to even. I don't want to make this flight back from Antarctica to mm. the states." Fuck uh, you. Did you guys hear the CrossFit Games have a new set of dates and a new uh, I uh, I've, format? I've read the headlines of the format, but uh, it was it seemed too weird and too stressful to click on. But yeah. perhaps you could enlighten too me weird and, and get too stressful. Well, for the sake of the podcast, we would prefer we would prefer to be informed here. So. Of course, exactly. Yeah. Well, uh, let me break it down for you. Mm. The CrossFit Games <laughs> is now yeah no, is now in a two part competition. With part one being online, and part two being in person. Uh huh. And the <laughs> online portion is the thirty qualified athletes, so it's mm-hmm. twenty uh, top in the open, uh-huh. and then the ten uh, sanctional winners yeah. from when sanctionals were a thing okay okay so 30 mm-hmm. 30 and 30 all right uh-huh. and then they're taking the top five to the in-person competition mm-hmm. which is going to be apparently about the same length of time like a full week as the regular crossfit games would have mm-hmm. been mm-hmm. but distanced but, yes but, but only five yeah that, only that, that five. actually makes it potentially more interesting to watch oh sure it well are they going to be on the ranch and stuff they say northern california so okay. it's going to be at the mm-hmm. ranch and elsewhere probably I, my guess is they're going to use other venues in in the space you know i Maybe, I don't know, fingers crossed there, but maybe taking inspiration from the uh, small number of competitors and the kind of different circumstances, it could be could be an interesting competition so they should to go watch. full teton games with it uh-huh. it should be it should be just like the teton games uh with with the, they should get the rock there they should have matt frazier pulling on a post or something they got if they don't have people they got to sell the drama with big logs falling over and i stuff. would love to True. see that that is that that really is the, the showmanship of what makes the crossfit games the crossfit games really needs to be stepped up in mm-hmm. in this this day and age um, I have zero confidence that that's going to actually happen, but I certainly do have a lot of excitement for seeing the top five men, top five women go head to head. If if by virtue of you know, you know, uh, promoting it, getting people interested, the qualification process is dramatic, and they manage to focus a bunch of eyes on one live stream for the big kickoff. Some part of me feels like the opening event will be rowing for two hours or just anything that will just make as many people run away from watching it as possible that feels like the type of thing that they would do on the online qualifier like why wouldn't you do mm-hmm. the marathon row or something like a half exactly. marathon row on the online because who fucking gives a shit mm-hmm. right whereas in person it's like give them the pig give them yeah. you know set a tree on fire make them chop it down yes now, will this online competition it. be done uh, the same style as your online competition, where everyone is uh, off of uh, Zoom? I online? will be taking 100% full credit for it, yes. I believe... No, I actually have no idea how they're going to do it. If they wanted to be smart, they would do it the way I did it, because mm-hmm. I am the smartest. And uh, smart if they wanted to, to be shitty, then they would do it the way that they're probably going to do it. Mm-hmm. And, and what's and that not, way? Whatever whatever the not <laughs> smart way is. You got to do it through Listen. FaceTime. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta do their face. You gotta wear a helmet with the iPhone hanging off of it. I I don't know. They haven't they haven't released any sort of information mm-hmm. about it. They haven't told the athletes. You know, they haven't even told the athletes how many days the online competition mm-hmm. is going to be. They said two to three. Mm-hmm. So I'd love to hear it. So either my guess is it's not going to be scheduled out the way like Rogue was. It's not going to be scheduled out the way uh, Sneaky Fit Summer Series was. Uh, they're probably just going to give them a handful of workouts and say these are the workouts that you have to do. Yeah. So is there? Mm. But, but they also they also committed to broadcasting mm. to live streaming the online competition, which makes no sense. It's mm. like they're going to have to pick a couple show horses, basically. I, I don't know. I, I honestly, they... it, the only way you can live stream it is if you schedule it, and if you schedule it, then you must already know what the workouts are, and you must already know what people need. But mm-hmm. they haven't communicated any of that to the. And when does it start? September 18th okay. in a month. So yeah. soon. Yeah. It starts uh, in a month. Is there any version of this where Matt Fraser does not end up as one of the five no. at the end person? No, no. Mm-hmm. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. 
I mean, it doesn't yeah, matter to me, but I don't. I don't think there's any situation in which he doesn't end up in the top I, five. I, uh, I mean, man. this I, online I'd have to qualification look... thing's sketchy. We yeah. could have Terrifus there. How do you fucking say his name? Left Terrace. That's that's a, that's an interesting <laughs> thing. Is like he, I mean, he's he, banned. He's banned, so he can't compete. But he would have been. He definitely would have won by like a. He, he would have won every fucking event. He's actually competes underneath. Tough Laris didn't stand. It's just his name with the T and the L switched. I, I don't remember the last time Matt Fraser did any competition and was not in the top five, much less did an online competition and was not in the top five, especially considering how uh, how prepared he has been. Like I was talking to him a couple months ago. Sonny, I agree. It is really a moment that we're all excited for. Uh, I was talking to him a couple months ago and he was saying that he was in like the best shape of his life then. Mm. Like ready to go whenever the CrossFit Games actually locked their shit up and had the event. And uh, uh, it Sounds like a direct quote actually. <laughs> yeah. And now that they have a direct, you know, like here's the dates. We're officially doing it this way. This is absolutely going to be the way we're going to do it. It's going to happen like this. Um, I am very interested to see the level of fitness that that guy brings. How do you think mm. he keeps track of his level of fitness? Cause you know, it's, it's very, it's very subjective. I mean, you could of course have a whole bunch of benchmarks and a whole bunch of times, but does he have like a little workout journal where he writes down his feelings post-workout <laughs> where he's just like, man, I felt extra fucking fit today. i feel like mega fit today. I've, I've <laughs> but actually, more than that i feel beautiful i've actually yeah. asked him about that um and he does not have thank Whoa, you sonny opened the door that's wild wild he's getting thank mad you. intelligent dog <clears throat> yeah he doesn't those opposable thumbs that we grafted onto him <laughs> really working wonders um matt says if i remember correctly that he does not keep track of any benchmarks other mm. than um other than like the big lifts and even that he doesn't really write down. He just kind of keeps in his head he in the back of his head. Uh, and I think that's just from being a weightlifter. He just remembers all that stuff, but I don't think he keeps benchmarks for workouts. I think he, he measures it based off of how he's feeling in certain workouts that he does. That's what I'm saying. Like he just, he, he definitely has like this, uh, uh, he has this crew around him, you know, like Shane can tell him, Hey man, you're, looking very fucking fit right now and tia can tell him hey man you're looking super fucking fit right now not but as like, fit as me but <laughs> right mm -hmm. but he also uh i think he also is he's just he's just very uh motivated and incentivized to be in the best shape of his life right now for sure so for sure i, I do like to think that maybe he has like a uh like artistic renderings of how he feels after each workout it's like, like the pain scale he, face yeah of, like, like sometimes he's brendan fraser from scorpion from mummy i mean yeah. and uh, then other times he's fucking bruce wayne mm. other yeah. times he's he scorpion king from mummy <laughs> yeah that too <laughs> sometimes you're scorpion uh, king sometimes you're like brendan fraser shittily cobbled together cgi <laughs> yeah. version of the rock yes uh, <laughs> i feel like the rock if he was just made of thumbs in his face that's all uh, it was. This, An this, assembly of thumbs. It's like a CGI of a claymation yes. of a thumb. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then you could sell that book of illustrations after your career is over. Yes. This was 2015. This mm -hmm. is 2016. Just be no. badass. Matt Fraser's Color Between the Lines book of illustrations. <laughs> it's just one rage face after another. Ah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, so it looks like for like a month here, you just went through a, a like a hentai phase. You're just a whole <laughs> bunch of hentai superheroes. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, don't worry about that. That that was uh, those are good times. Are you the tentacles or are you the? the yeah, no. <clears throat> Everything you see in that picture is me. <laughs> no, that's it's all uh, it's all just different representations of myself. Um, <laughs> I lost the plot somewhere. Guys. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if there was a good one there. Anyways. Yeah, but either way, I am I am excited about the idea of having the top five. Um, I think one of the biggest criticism I have I had of the games last year is is the just such piss poor programming we saw mm -hmm. when they cut to ten, and that was one of the things I was most excited about. I was like, man, you're gonna cut to ten. We've seen such crazy shit happen, even with like a full field of forty. Damn. Cut to ten, it's like wow. The, Remind me, what was the thing once we got to ten? We had, uh, we had a workout that was like pegboard, double unders, and oh, split, uh, split like and dumbbell split cannon jerks yeah, and, yeah. and split snatch, which was 
basically the per- the person who got out in front stayed in front the entire time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember uh, that now. And then the next one was like the clean ladder, which was like interesting to watch, but took it could have been forever. Way, like the year mm-hmm. before, they did the clean ladder way better. That speed yeah. clean ladder, yeah. way more exciting. This and then one, the yeah. the Sunday morning event was like fucking. It was way too long of a bike. swim. Yeah, they did a swim and a run. And then they got back in and they did like this this thing. It was like a salt bike and toes to ring, followed mm-hmm. by like burpees and overhead squats. And Wasn't then, it Carrie Pierce that ate shit on the toe to ring? Yeah. And what was the last Carrie. event? I don't even remember mm-hmm. what the fucking last oh, event was. Oh, the last event was, was, the, was the, the standard. standard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was like Grace, Grace, 30 muscle ups for time, and then Isabel. Yeah. So it's like that was interesting to watch. Yeah. But basically everything else they did with the top 10 was really fucking boring and mm-hmm. lame. I think. Uh, I think the standard gave me my favorite moment from the games last year, and that was Matt Fraser being behind Noah at the start. Isabel does a few reps, then takes his shirt off because he knows he's going to win, and then motherfucks the whole field to take yeah, first. Yeah, he did motherfuck yep. the whole field yep, right yep, there. Yep, yep. God, yeah, that's so epic. Noah started doing like <laughs> singles on the snatches, and you could almost see Matt be like, hmm. "Yeah." Matt walked up to him and did a set of five to start off with, and then ripped his shirt off and just fucking went from there. Um, yeah, that was that was pretty dope. I. Uh, did, did I did I tell you I asked Rich about that workout? If he's ever done that workout, Mm-mm. the standard. I was like, hey man, have you ever done the standard, the the Grace, uh, mm-hmm. thirty muscles, time and Isabel? Yeah. He's like, yeah. not at one thirty five. I was like, oh uh-huh. fuck. He's like, yeah, I think I did it at either two twenty five or one eighty five. I can't remember. I was like, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? Like, what the. Fuck? You, you think that you think that doing it with two twenty five would be a big enough memory, it'd make a big enough mark on yourself mm-hmm. that you would that would stick to your memory. Yeah, you know? No, that it hurt. did not make a fucking dent in his memory. I think that what we need to do <clears throat> is just set up the super fight, guys. How we need to put it out there: Rich Froning versus Matt. I mean, nothing else is going on in the world. When else is it going to happen? Dude, this Come on, was, guys. This was the opportunity. Rich was in that top mm-hmm. qualifier spot. He turned it down. Then they had the teams got canceled, and he started his own event, and his own event got canceled and i even te- i texted him i was like hey rich like listen man i'm i'm not gonna i'm not gonna tell you that you definitely should throw your hat back in the ring mm-hmm. but you should 100 percent do all the workouts on camera mm-hmm. just to fucking see yeah and he was like yeah you know if i'm feeling good i was like get the <laughs> fuck out of here dude get the fuck out of here's, course you're gonna like, do here's them. the thing though kyle kyle might be on to a good point it's like fuck the crossfit games right now let's just do schedule our own event that is a super fight between just matt frazier and rich froning it's a one-off event a couple of days Need to crowd crowdfund maybe a prize purse <laughs> yes. for the guys was, to draw them you, there. Listen, guys, say. if you build it, they will come. I think that if we program the perfect workouts to really, to really that would that would be the workouts that everyone would want to see between Matt Frazier and Rich Froning, then we can put that. At, we can put throw a lot of energy out that a lot of other people, a lot of visualization. People put it on their vision boards. It'll happen if you build did, it. They will come. Did I not? Did I not tell you guys that I had I had I even structured out how that would work? Like I structured out how would a one on one CrossFit competition over multiple days work? Yes, go ahead. I okay. think you have told us. I, this, I feel like I brought me. this up. I, I definitely have told you. Yeah. But it's now in these times we may actually do it. Yeah. So now, so now let's it's hear a very it. cool concept. So the way this works is you have you have multiple days, and you do like these workout blocks. Like tennis has mm. you know the one game or the one match that's multiple games and Mm -hmm. each game is made up of different like head-to-head moments so like you Mm -hmm. gain points by winning a series or whatever Mm -hmm. and you have these like five workout series over the course Mm -hmm. of a few days uh, or three workout series over the course of a few days like multiple of these Mm -hmm. and in each one one person gets to program one of them so Mm -hmm. they alternate between one of them programming the other one the other two are picked from like a pool that pool is already pre-programmed. They all know mm-hmm. what the workouts are. And each person gets a veto per day, mm-hmm. one per day of the other person's workout. Mm-hmm. So they can say, you know what? Fuck you. You're not programming a marathon row when I know you're going to beat me at that or whatever. Yeah, yeah. 220. Yeah. Right. And then so you, <laughs> yeah. you basically get the opportunity to like gamesmanship the veto to figure out the workout. Uh, and then one workout per set is also 
cooperatively programmed between mm-hmm. the two of them. Interesting. It's so, like, okay, so, we want wall balls here. Cool. I want a salt bike. Sick. I'm going to do Isabel. And it's like, yeah, you've come. But are the workouts yeah. are generated by the athletes themselves and no, then put the, into the central pool? So the, the vast majority. So like, let's say like 70% of the workouts mm-hmm. would be pre-programmed by like a trusted third party or a group mm-hmm. of trusted third parties. Or yes. Arm and Hammer. Or, Arm and Hammer. Well, I am, the tr- I am the trusted, trusted third party. He is the most third party we're talking. we know. We're talking butterfly sit-ups. That's a really good shirt, actually. The trusted third party. That's right. We're talking we need a three party system and Armin is that single man. unders. We're talking light dumbbell delt Lattice squeezes. <laughs> delt squeezes. <laughs> when reverse dumbbell flies. Uh, so what what are the banner workouts? What are the, the bangers, if you will? Chase, you understand this? Mm-hmm. The bangers, am I using this correctly? What are the bops? Yeah. What are the bops, if you will? Of the whole, th- people are going to say, you know, what I'm excited about seeing is Matt Frazier and Rich Fronin doing this thing I and think that thing. I, I would say you have to go back to like the greatest hits from the games Ooh, and like start pulling idea. like old games workouts, like the bird and run or yeah. uh, the push pull workouts. Or that's not a bad Nico's idea, triangle. man. That's not or a bad idea. Miko's triangle, fuck, here. as long as possible, survive really as long sick. as possible. What yeah. about that time that Miko Salo did like a 20 minute King Kong AMRAP and just posted a video of it? That was. That's pretty cool talking about i'd watch that yeah yeah. i think the difference is now is that that would be like rabdo inducing like back then well you you could scale up the reps a little bit but you (laughs) understand i'm saying that that that, those kind of movements i would love to see those it would evoke a a very classic sense of crossfit yeah just a set of rings a heavy ass barbell and a wall yes how crossfit was back in the 90s when we were doing it back then we're wearing fucking scrunchies and shit i don't fucking remember jorts and flannel and we were doing crossfit Remember that? Yeah, there's uh there there I think there's a lot of really I would I would love to see double pyramid Helen into max shoulder overhead mm, yes, show up. That again. was one of my favorite mm. events ever. Uh, that was it. Mm-hmm. And then about halfway through everyone figures out that they can jerk from their back and starts doing that. Yeah. Know, so. The rack jerk, yeah. Uh there's there's a lot of really cool I, th- I think you just pull like you can pull a bunch of old badass games workouts mm-hmm. and uh and use those. Um, and then have you know me program the rest of them if you want mm-hmm. whatever yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, I think that. I think this is an excellent idea, and I think we should pick workouts that are impressive that will stick in people's memories, like Pyramid Double Helen, but that could be programmed in a variety of locations. You don't need a special location for it. you; just need a standard track or something like that mm-hmm. to do those yeah. workouts. But because they're classic, they stick in people's minds. Like, mm-hmm. oh shit, I want to see them do that. I never seen Matt Frazier do that workout. Plus, the entire thing actually lends itself incredibly well to broadcast mm-hmm. because instead of being like three 12-hour days of broadcasting, you basically treat it like a poker tournament Mm -hmm. where you have a couple of hours of action, you know, half an hour of that is the figuring out of what workouts are going to be the draw of what, like the, the blank spaces are going to look like the, you know, going back and Mm -hmm. forth to cooperatively Mm -hmm. define what the next workout's going to be. And then you have, you have like a little bit of downtime. Mm -hmm. You have like a half hour to an hour, maybe an hour and a half of downtime where there's interviews, fucking analysis. You come Mm -hmm. back again for another one, like a longer set that Mm -hmm. night. That's Mm -hmm. like a, you know, like a five workout series. Yeah. And you repeat that three yes. days in a row. You get you can get like twenty workouts in in three days, and they would be fine. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think Rich would be fine because he's just like this is a typical weekend. Yeah, I don't know I, if anybody else does that. I think Matt would be okay. I think he'd be okay. Mm-hmm. How do we get them on board? Obviously, they're already on board because we know they listen. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, we know that they like these workouts, but the thing is, these are public figures, guys. They're a bit self-conscious. They need their egos stroked. They need to know that if they come out for this, that the people will support them. You know, I'm thinking like, you know, people used to mail stuff to studios to get shows they wanted back on. How can we get a show of public support? You know, for do we have everyone order Papa John's pizzas to Rich Froning's house? You know, because he ate Papa John's pizza that one time before a workout in one of the documentaries. You know, we got to get something that people can get behind. We start a Kickstarter to buy him something, like a, a nice box of cigars, like a $50, like $75 gift. Whoa. All right, we create a Kickstarter for that. Now, if the Kickstarter goes above and beyond the $75, we still buy them the box of cigars. But we pocket the rest. We don't pocket the rest. That's oh. what I'm saying. We just use it and we just we put it in there, a little bit of, a little bit of action, and we say, look, there's more where this came from. It's more about <laughs> letting people know 
<laughs> it's more about letting people know, letting Matt and uh, and Rich know that the people want this. All right, you know, <laughs> it's like we're moving money around. Okay, we're letting people know. People just want us to tell them what website to go to 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 to, uh, to I, where they can vote with their I, dollar. I, I, if we I create think, that opportunity for them, this will work. I agree, but I think also you might be a uh, cigar's good idea. Yes. But you need to think something that's more specific for them yes. and also something that's cheap enough where you feel that if you're donating a little bit of money, mm-hmm. you're contributing something. I'm I say it. both of those guys, what do they enjoy doing? They enjoy Winning. Shooting propane tanks outside. I say, yes. v- viewers, uh, people who want to kickstart this, get this started, buy them a propane tank. That's right. One donation for one propane tank. Send them stacks and stacks of propane tanks. A lifetime supply. A yes. pyramid. A yes. pyramid of propane tanks in Cookville, Tennessee, yes. ready to be shot with shotguns or AR-15s. Take Winner gets pick. to shoot all yes. of them. I'm mm-hmm. just saying, I've seen... A lot of movies mm-hmm. based around the exhibition match that becomes the main event. Yes. Oh, yeah. And we don't have to tell them that it's an exhibition match that turns into the main event. We can mm-hmm. just tell them it's an exhibition match. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, like uh, a la yeah. Ivan Drago and Rocky mm-hmm. exhibition match. But you know what happened? The fucking Soviet Union collapsed right. after that fight. Yes. He you know, defeated of that country. Fight. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other Rocky, Rocky Balboa, uh, exhibition match between him and the heavyweight boxer. Mm-hmm. And uh, that went poorly for him. Yes, but, you mean you the know. heavyweight wrestler, yeah, and Clubber Lang, no, no, and Apollo Club- Creed. They, they were all exhibition They're all matches. Exhibition <laughs> matches, except for the first two, right? The first two I were guess technically, world championships. but it was supposed to be kind of a lark. Yeah, even the even, one, even the first know. one was kind of an exhibition. Match, yeah. Yeah. So. Either way, exhibition matches, man. Yeah, yeah man. A la the Rocky series. Mm. I'm telling you what, man. That's where we're at. That's where we should be. That's how you I'm make just saying, this happen. If we can create a Kickstarter. Someone photoshopped together us a, a picture of a giant pyramid made of propane tanks. Okay, if we can kickstart this propane tank thing and we can get as many propane tanks to Cookville as possible, it's possible that we could, and we get a propane sponsorship to, to pay for shit. Come yeah, on, guys. Blue Rhino. I've got it. Okay. Tell people it's a charity. That's the easiest way to get to dupe people into That's shit. That's true. That's true. Tell them it's for charity. That's like, true. Like the way golf does. Shh, Armin, we're in a public forum. Don't give away the game. That's the problem is you and I are too, we are all too honest to engage in charity because it feels far too disingenuous, I feel. So we, 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 we're, it's, it's holding us back. Nice guys finish last. Since we're honest guys, we don't want to do that. What if we tell them it's for charity? <laughs> I'm for. Does anyone have a charity they're fond of? I have no idea. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. You see, the Human Fund. The Human. F- what is that? <laughs> I don't even fucking know what that is. <laughs> this is a charity for more entertainment for human beings. It's like I'm sorry. I've never listened to This American Life. I don't know the names of charities. So uh, it's like we got to find a way to make that. To, to, to we have to find a way to make this to uh, uh, financially. Financially, at least a wash you, for, Matt you, and, uh, for Matt and for Matt. Would Rich. you say this charity is for uh, Club and Puffins? Yeah, we just <laughs> all this money goes towards killing Club, more puffins in Iceland. You know, Club, that's an Club infestation. And yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, they got really big bats now. It's fucking insane. With all the money they raised, they got humongous bats. You can take out at least twenty puffins per swing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I would. I uh, I think I'm. I may be the only person. Honestly, mm-hmm. like I, I, I don't want I don't want to speak for other people, but I feel like I would enjoy seeing that. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if it was Matt and Rich that were taking out the puffins. <laughs> I think that could be one of the workouts. <laughs> Mur- <laughs> maximum puffin murderage. We're mm-hmm. now in some weird bizarre world that's like Mario Party where it's like a side game and you're like, I don't know why they're doing it, but they're doing it and I mm-hmm. hope one of them wins. Yeah. Yeah. I I I I I I'd I'd go on a limb and say people would want to see that happen. Yep. God. See this event it. happen? Oh, absolutely! I think you are the person who can put it on. I know. The, yeah, the arbiter of dream dream exhibition matches. Yep. Hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Listen, yep. the only way it happens is uh, is after the season's over. There's no way at this point. Matt is like so dialed in to to the games. Mm-hmm. Oh, sure, but the season's gonna be over in like five minutes. Yeah, it's gonna be over in a few weeks. But this, uh, I, I I need to start planning right need, now. We need to prepare right now. Yes, because clearly we have. Uh, let's say okay, it's gonna be based in Austin because obviously all the energy of the world is going to Austin. Uh, we Puffins get already Joe, we get Joe here. Rogan mm-hmm. involved somehow with uh, mm-hmm. helping promote it. You know, the two fittest yes. men on earth. You think CrossFit ain't that fit? Well, you come down and see these guys. No, yeah. uh, because it's Austin. Also, we need to have some actual rowing boat rowing on the uh, on the lake there. Bat catching. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> the um, what else? What else is really Austin specific that we have always wanted to torches? see? Torches. Yeah. Yeah. Outsmoking yeah. Willie Nelson. A lot of torches. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Outsmoking Joe Rogan. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But that's true. There should here's be. A, here's a question: Will Joe Rogan's move to uh, Austin, Texas, uh, advance time-wise the legalization of marijuana in Texas? You know, when you suddenly have the biggest in media influencer in the in the world living in a place, and he's famous for being a stoner, and now he lives in a place where it is technically still illegal. I have no idea. I I I told Joe when I moved here, I was I like, know. Joe. You got to come to Austin. I it's know. way better than California. And he and he told me, you know what, best friend Armin, who's yeah. never been on the show because you you try and stay uh, under the radar and you don't want to utilize my platform to grow your platform. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe when the time is right is yep. what he said. I know. Mm-hmm. And you know what, I would have said the time was right back then, but now is you know what's the best time to plant a tree? It's more right. Twenty years ago. It's more right. What's the second best time? Well, in that way, you're you're five or six years ahead of Joe Rogan. You are you're the influencer who influences the influencer. That is big correct. Brain, big brain. That's correct. Yeah. That's right. Next thing you know, he'll he'll have a mullet. You know, maybe 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 I don't have mm-hmm. hundreds of millions of people listening to me. But you know what I do have? The guy who has hundreds of millions of people listening to him mm-hmm. listening to me. That's yes. an, that's huge. And you know that is uh, he's a big fan. I know there's. Another event, another event idea. You have to beat. You have to dis. You have to prove Alex Jones wrong to Alex Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Matt about, and Rich. about what? Anything. About anything. Interesting. That's it. Interesting. You got to take up an argument with him, <laughs> and you got to prove him. You got to prove your point, regardless. And he can use whatever he wants. He can just make shit up. And he gets to pick whether who the winner is. Yeah, he gets to pick at the end. He's like, uh, <clears throat> you you convinced me the most there, uh, Richard, but I still won. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's a good event. The lizard people uh, are trying to take our constitutional rights. Yes, you know you mentioned that's that another the, very Austin thing. We just got to fold it in there. You mentioned lizard at the people. beginning of the show Brad Pitt and Flat Fight Club, and I was actually just watching Fight Club last night after mm-hmm. watching like the first hour of Zodiac. I had no idea that they were both by David Fincher. Yeah, yeah. yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a hell of a coincidence from yeah, your yes. perspective. Yeah. Completely different different style there. Oh, yeah. They, well, yeah, different but so similar if you watch through all of his films between those films. He just kind of began to get just icier and more distant and more and colder and less uh, texture. And more digital. And more digital yep. for sure. Uh, but yeah, that was one of the first big. Uh, I remember Zodiac. That was one. I mean, it's a fucking amazing movie. But it's one of those first movie. One of the first movies that uh, where he really kind of began to define how David Fincher was going to use digital cinema, which of course we would see kind of maybe reach its flowering in a, a, a social network, which kind of I think is the film that in a lot of ways legitimized you know digital as a uh, you know as a, a new and cool aesthetic medium as opposed to just you know a a less than version of 35 millimeter and that's you know debatable but uh, that first film or that that film Zodiac which he, he had to fight to shoot on kind of some early cameras I think it was shot on Viper cameras maybe the same ones that Michael Mann shot on mm. but like so much of that film is uh, also the, the other the other big feature if you ever watch those VFX breakdowns on Mindhunter and all the David Fincher episodes of that and how much of the background and everything is all done in CGI oh, shit. you can see that uh, he does this all the time in Zodiac like there's this whole scene on a hill where Mark Ruffalo and uh, Anthony Edwards are you know investigating a, a murder in the back of a cab and they're like walking up and down the block and it's dark and it's all shot on green screen it's all shot uh, all shot Sin City yeah, that entire style. that entire cab that entire cab yeah, yeah. scene like the driving of the yeah. cab from like the top Dude, shot yeah. and mm-hmm. that, that is strange because I did I, I don't know anything about Zodiac and yeah. how it was shot but I kept thinking like there was a lot of scenes in that first hour where I was just like Something looks a little off. This doesn't. Yeah, yeah. It all has a very specific look and yeah, feel. Yeah. yeah and I was it, like, that doesn't. It's not registering right to me. Yeah, but yeah. it still was nice. It's it inorganic. Aesthetically nice. Is a great way of. It's almost is deli- almost deliberately inorganic. Yeah, deliberately yeah. inhuman. I yeah. I we actually Katie and I just recently watched Zodiac. Uh, I'd never finished it, and she'd never seen it, mm-hmm. and uh, we both really enjoyed it. We do this thing where we sometimes pick. Longer. I can tell you why she enjoyed it. <laughs> that's yeah. right yeah uh, let JG. it go Armin just let it go <laughs> JG's in there uh, yeah uh, and he's a dad he's a single dad isn't he yeah. <laughs> sorry dad mm. I just, 
it just hurts so much. Uh, <laughs> uh, we do the thing where we pick like a longer movie and we'll like split it over a couple nights and like watch it like episodically. And uh, uh, we re- we both really enjoyed it, but then we were like, oh, we should watch another Fincher movie. And Social Network is on Netflix, mm-hmm. and neither of us can stomach watching Social Network mm-hmm. because Jesse Eisenberg has been ruined. By mm. Batman vs Superman. Oh, really? Oh. Like we watched Batman vs Superman in that episodic w- sense, and his performance as Lex Luthor was so off-putting yeah. that neither of us want to sit down and watch him. I can't as- remember it at all. Yeah, you can't. can't you all. can't let. You cannot let. Uh, I can't do you it. can't let Batman versus Superman hold sway in your mind in any way. Jesse but, Eisenberg's voice and mannerisms make me want to vomit. But here's the thing: that's what I you don't. Want. It's you don't don't blame Jesse Eisenberg. At performances generally, if they work or if they don't work, the actor doesn't know. He's standing in a fucking room with some people. It's about where they're put in context, what they're juxtaposed against. So no doubt, he probably did a really out there weird performance and made a lot of weird choices, but. The filmmakers decided what takes to use. The filmmakers decided what order to put him in, and all that other kind of shit. So, in other words, what I'm saying is, and I'm not saying I'm gonna let I'm gonna I'm let gonna Jesse blame, Eisenberg off the hook. I'll a little blame bit. Zack Snyder. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Just blame him for that because Second week in a row. <laughs> That's right. You can blame him for that because you never know. That's what I'm saying. Is is uh, is uh, he's a he's a it's, decent he's a decent actor. It's like it's like. You and know, he's in a lot of other good movies that you're going to want to enjoy. I'm like never going to. I don't think so. Yeah. It's Dude, just not going to happen. So, I can't Social do, I can't Network do it. is is fucking top tier. Can't do it. It's yeah. up there. I even the little teaser trailer that Netflix plays, and it's like you know 30 <laughs> seconds of him talking. But about, you're supposed to hate him. In I the can't movie. do it. Empathize with how much money he was paid to say those stupid lines in. <laughs> like if you were there and like, yeah, like apparently this is going to be a big movie and I'm going to be Lex Luthor from now on. I you guess. know when you get food poisoning and you're like, oh fuck, I think it was the brisket. I can't, oh yeah, you I never go back brisket. to that place. You know? Oh yeah, it's yeah. true. Yeah, it's you know a bad I mean? taste. Yeah, it's associative. It's I, subconscious I, now. It, it is. It is embedded into my existence. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I, I'm going to be able to get over. It You're going to have to do time. some deep uh, Jesse Eisenberg visualization to sort of cleanse your inner Jesse Eisenberg. It's like the same. I don't. I, I. I honestly don't know. The only actor that has escaped clean from that awful film is Henry Cavill. And it might be because of how much Katie loves him, honestly. Oh, and, and that's probably yeah, deep seated inside I, you too. That's the opposite when, for me. He's one of the only people who I, I kind of write off. From I'll watch. I'll, I'll watch anything yeah, he's yeah. in. Dude, you didn't watch The Witcher? Yeah, you didn't watch The Witcher. Yeah, well, I, I did see him in uh, the last Mission Impossible movie, where it was confirmed for me that I, I think he does not have very much screen presence. What, what about? But, um, come on, he loaded uh, his fists. Yes. Like they were guns, and in that, that movie. and indeed that one quarter of a second was interesting, that and one, I and mm-hmm. I liked that choice. What's the movie that he's in with Army Hammer where they play spies? Yeah, man, the, the man uh, from man Uncle. Uncle yeah. The man from Uncle was so good. Yeah, Napoleon or was it? Solo. Can you guys tell me if it was see, good? I didn't, I didn't <laughs> see that one. No. Holy shit! I've seen some of the Please original Man it. from Uncle, although, which is rad. Although fun fun fact, Robert one, of, well, one of my professors in film school, uh, Robert Foschko, uh, worked as a uh, uh, producer on. Uh, the original, man, man, the from original man from Uncle from the 1960s, with Robert Vaughn. So there's I a thought this one was super entertaining. Mm. But I'll, you know, check it out. I'll watch I'm it. simple-minded sometimes. I, you know what? Katie is a very easy sell when it comes to Army Henry Hammer Cavill. Movies. You know what? I and, should give and Army Hammer. I guess <laughs> I'll make. I'll make. Listen, we'll we'll make a deal here. This is good. Both fuck. <laughs> maybe maybe the reason I don't like Army or what is, it, what is his fucking name Henry Cavill so much after Mission Impossible Three was or Mission Impossible was it seven at this Who point? Knows? Who, Who fucking knows? knows? Shit, they're all the same. Mission Impossible, yes, whatever, is just because I find those films to be so boring and free of any personality whatsoever. So. In the same way, I will give Henry Cavill a second chance. Maybe I'll watch a Witcher episode or something. If you give Jesse Eisenberg yeah, a second coin to your chance. Witcher. Well, here's Dude, the, here's yeah. the problem. I need to know this. Has Henry Cavill ever acted in something with a good director? Like once ever? I don't think Anything? so. Anything? It depends that, whether or not you think see. of Tarsum as a as a he's made as a director films. as a director of actors no he is Guys, not we are just the first listen, Henry, you wanted a really jacked super good looking actor no. that isn't necessarily that great at acting and henry cavill's giving you that mm. and you're spitting in his face well here's here's the thing here's the thing he could probably are, do uh, the splits uh, he might well have he <laughs> might well have he might well have the same gifts as say an arnold schwarzenegger or a van damme in those days but the problem was 
Arnold Schwarzenegger by luck or just by just by the the uh, the energy of the universe was focused on him at the time. He got into movies with a murderer's row of some of the best action directors, best directors, period, that have ever lived, and just one after the other. Great movie after great movie for like a decade and a half. It was insane. Uh, so they, what you're saying is Henry Cavill needs his own version of Eraser or just really James Cameron needs to direct Henry Cavill. Well, he needs, mm. he needs one time to have a good director direct him. Just once. Then we can see. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that I don't think that's happened. Yeah. No, I don't think it that's hasn't. happened. It hasn't. Because I I, I what I don't know, was it McGee that directed him in those in those uh-huh. uh, uh in the Mission Impossible movie? No, no, it was uh it was Christopher McQuarrie who is uh, a very very competent journeyman absent any personality or point of view. He is uh in fact, it, 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 Christopher Yeah, but Tom McQuarrie, Cruise does all his own stunts. Yes, exactly. So, yes, as they you know. as they continue to remind. It's like that's where you realize how much point, some kind of point of view is actually important in movies, you know, that you can't be a company man for that long and then start making movies because Christopher McQuarrie, he's, made, he's, he's making so many choices that I like. He's shooting the thing on 35, he's doing all these stunts, he's doing all this real stuff, and yet the film feels like kind of a transparent shell of an action movie. Hmm. And I think that's just because, you know... What else has he got? He's got the. It's he needs a little. He who, needs a. So you know. who would you guys want to see? Who would you want to see direct Henry Cavill? Hmm. Who who makes this? Well, this that's a question. Shine for you. Well, he was in thing. Stardust, directed by Matthew Vaughn. That's true. Well, Matthew Vaughn has made <laughs> a couple of interesting movies. Uh, he was in The Count of Monte Cristo as yeah. the as the son. That no. was directed by Kevin Reynolds. Yeah, I don't know anything about Kevin Reynolds, but I do remember that version of Count of Monte Cristo, and it was forgettable. Uh, he was in Hellraiser, Hellworld. I cool. Said good I haven't stuff. seen that one. Mm-hmm. Directed by Rick Bota. Yeah. But no, uh, Chase brings up a good point. Who would we like to see direct Henry Cavill, but but more broadly, what kind of movie could Henry Cavill maybe be? Well, good that's the in? problem. Is I still don't know what Henry Cavill's uh, like advantages are. Like I don't know what his assets are because there's, there's there's other guys who are handsome. And and jacked, but, and, like but but also it's have personality. But also have personality. So it's like if I want to think of a good, uh, you know, a good action director. If I want to think of someone who's going to bring some, who's going to, I want, I want that actor to work with someone who's yeah. not Henry Cavill. He has That's personality, my man. Yeah, he, it's he, the his, it's the Instagram's swoon? quite good actually. Oh, okay. It's the swoon, well, I guess I haven't but seen then also though. he's like, I built my own gaming piece. Yeah, he's kind of he's kind mm. of a nerd. He has a cute dog. Nice. Well, how, how come I'm not seeing any of this anywhere? Because because you haven't watched The Witcher. Because Christopher McQuarrie must have just 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 he extinguished just, I, all the personality out of him as soon as he made it onto the set. I guess impossible. So what you're saying is Christopher McQuarrie did what uh, Zack Snyder did to fucking Jesse Eisenberg. There you yeah. go. I mean, also, es- essentially, I am, but from a completely different dynamic. In the in, in the sense that Zack Snyder was, was, that film is a uh, is a fucking mess and it's a chaos of weird and contradictory <laughs> passions and incompetencies and all kinds of insanity. Whereas if you look at the exact opposite of that, an overabundance of order instead of an overabundance of chaos, then you kind of get that soulless, saltine cracker that is the more recent Mission Impossible film. So in a sense, yes, it is. A, 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 I would put Zack Snyder in, in, people will hate me for saying this, more in a kind of lunatic Terry Gilliam camp, even though that's a big reach for some people, then I would put him in the Huge same props. camp. That might as, be the uh, nicest thing anyone said about Only him. in that he is a man destroyed by his passions. Then, uh, then I would necessarily put him in this anywhere near Christopher McQuarrie, who is instead a man who I'm sure has very clean sheets and uh, and doesn't like a lot of salt on his food. And man, you can really—that's the guy you want directing your action movies, your forgettable, forgettable action movies. So you want Michael Mann to direct Henry Cavill? <laughs> Honestly, that's a pretty good idea. Yeah, uh, a Michael. Well, listen, Michael Mann. Uh, and he did a really good job with Tom Cruise and Collateral. It's true. That's a good. No, and that's I, I. Chase said Michael Mann right as we were uh, breaking, and I I think that is a smart fucking choice because Michael Mann definitely can get a lot of a sense of deep waters running very very still. It's what most of his movies are about, and it's true. Now that I'm thinking about it, Henry Cavill with his fucking jawline and whatever else. I'm thinking Michael Mann. I'm thinking Nicholas Windig Refn. I'm thinking someone Ooh, who's going to have oh, him shit. stand icy still and not have to say anything or so do you're ta- anything. You're talking drive. 
part yeah, exactly. two, except yeah. with Henry Cavill. You could probably just except do with drive more with Henry plausible Cavill. punching because yeah. Drive. Here's the thing: it's a great movie, beginning to end. But the one thing I know it sticks. It stuck out in my mind, so it must have stuck out in you guys' minds. Is when. When uh, Ryan Gosling beats up that guy yeah. in the elevator who clearly weighs literally twice as much yep. as he does, it's just not plausible. He doesn't have the you mass. You don't believe it. He does <laughs> that, not have the did, mask. Are you guys going to buy that? That's, never, the that's never bothered me in my, my yeah, entire no. time. It's the like only he, thing whereas, that bothered me is the fucking driving scene, which was sick, but he's like flooring it in reverse. And you're just like, <laughs> what? What? Yes. And uh, Christina Hendricks is like, ah! God, it's been a while. I, need to I don't that remember one. a lot of that movie. Yeah. There's so much blood. But the point being, <laughs> Henry Cavill, shoulders like boulders, angular face, Nicholas Wendy Refn is going to hit him with a bunch of weird colored lights that are really going to play into all those weird sunken angles on his face. It's going to look really dope. And um, what is Michael Mann going to do? He's going to have him staring out a lot of windows. He's going to have him saying very, very little. Uh, he's going to have turn. She's going to treat him like Alain Delon, and it's going to be great. Basically, so. anyone that can get Henry Cavill to smolder mm -hmm. uh, in the right setting is the person who's going to be able to unlock his potential because Word. he can smolder like a motherfucker nice. this is doubtfire too directed by michael man <laughs> directed <laughs> by michael man mrs doubtfire too <laughs> i'm just my brain's now really just trying i, to I don't think my brain is. can put together yeah my if michael man got doubtfire oh, no. 2 with henry cavill those three Fuck. things can't can't go it's together. like all right it's like, it's like all right it's, it's like uh, uh, uh i'm a mission it's 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 a public market somewhere in the middle east <laughs> all right and uh henry cavill is walking down the street and he's like his head is all wrapped in one of those white things that's covering his face and he's got sunglasses on and then all of a sudden this uh, he notices a guy who's just like who's just like leaning against something but like the guy's blonde and he kind of nods at him and like Henry Cavill like nods at him and he walks over slowly because like they know each other from the before time and like they talk to each other and obviously there's special op stuff going on and he's like um and he uh he, he I don't remember the name of the Robin Williams character from the first Mrs. Doubtfire but he's like listen um He's gone. I thought you should know. <laughs> and so we immediately, we're immediately drawing spiritual energy from Robin Williams' He's death. He's gone. I thought you and should we're, know. And we're exploiting Robin Williams' death. Who's going to look after these and then, kids? And then he's going to be like, and he's going to say, what happened to him? And he said, uh, and, he's, and, and immediately we're introduced to a whole backstory for Robin Williams' character in the first film that we were not aware of. Uh, they talk about it a lot because this will be produced PTSD. by Netflix. Because this will be produced by Netflix. So mm. lots of talking will be Oh, involved. it's a series. It's not a movie. It's a yeah, series. Yeah, lots of yeah. series. And... The, that backstory will involve, obviously, special operations. He worked with Henry Cavill. He trained Henry Cavill. And we're going to see a younger Henry Cavill played by um, a, a, a young boy with a mustache. Timothy Chamelot. Yes, exactly. Younger Henry yes. Cavill played by Timothy <laughs> Yes, exactly. Yes, perfect, perfect. We're going to have two... With a CGI, CGI Robin yes, Williams. Yes, yep, yes, with yes, yes. With CGI yes, yes. Robin Williams. Mm -hmm. CGI Robin Williams is training As like him. the Liam Neeson yes. mentor of Batman mm -hmm. Begins. Yes, yep, yep, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I love All it. All that shit's happening. We eventually make it back there. He, of course, has to reconnect. He has to go find Harvey Firestein, bring him out of retirement to put... <laughs> old lady makeup all over his angular yes. masculine face because now as Mrs. Doubtfire because basically well, this is what's happened Mrs. is this is uh, 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 various oil interests in Abu Dhabi have created media companies and they have now licensed Mrs. Doubtfire's television show because they want to create their own version of it because if we remember oh, the first man. film ends yes. with Mrs. Doubtfire getting her uh, his her own television show they want their own version so he's being sent in Argo style uh, because he's obviously, you know, he's he's the baddest, the, the, this badass spy. Everyone would know him. So how are they getting him in, in secret? Dressing him as Mrs. Doubtfire, going there. So he has to actually do the show, kindergarten cop style. He actually has to, like, talk to kids and solve their problems while at night sneaking out dressed as the old woman and uh, murking terrorists. And uh, yes. the yeah, yeah. the kids... <laughs> I'm so signed up. Sally yeah. Field is... Uh, is, is Still dead. alive <laughs> or dead? Sure. No, Sally Field is the around. The kids, the kids are yes. the bad guys, the secret bad guys. No, Sally the whole thing. Field turned. shows up like Sarah Connor in Terminator Genesis 
or uh, Genesis. Which one was the last one? Was that I Genesis? I oh, da- no, don't no, know. it was the one Dark after Future? that. The Dark, oh, Dark Fate. Future. Dark, Dark Fate. Fate. Okay, yeah, Dark so Fate. she so she shows up like Sarah Connor, black tank top. She shoots someone with a shotgun. Like Henry Cavill. Again, remember he is dressed as Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> he is on the roof of well, somewhere the, in Mogadishu, are, those... and this guy has an AK-47 pointed at him. He's dead to rights. All right, he's about to deliver the killing stroke, and all of a sudden, bam! And that guy gets blown away, and he looks up, and there's Sally Field wearing a black tank top, and she's. Says, uh, uh, the kids are uh, the right. whole time. <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> Which is her line from Mrs. Mrs. Doubtfire. Doubtfire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You guys yeah. Get it. And then Pierce Brosnan. Yeah, does yeah. he does he make a return? Yeah, he, he no no. Henry Cavill is Pierce Brosnan's son. <gasps> oh shit! Perfect. He, see, that's he's a he plays a sophisticated British spy who, of course, was trained by Robin Williams, and that's what we never knew about the first film, is that he was moving in on Sally Field just to keep an eye on Robin Williams, okay? Mm. He wasn't actually interested in banging Sally Field. We all wondered why. And then, it didn't make any sense. Exactly. And so, But it's only partway through, though, that we reveal where this is really building to, that this has all been a stealth disguise for a crossover, yes. a franchise crossover. I'm into it. Where we discover that in the backstory for Mrs. Doubtfire, that in fact he wasn't just any British spy looking in on Robin Williams, but in fact was none other than 007 yes. from the, from the, uh, the heyday of That's Chris right. Brosnan, and still part of the same GoldenEye universe. And then we and will... Henry Cavill is here to pick up the mantle mm-hmm. as... Simultaneously, Mrs. Double Doubtfire. and Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah. Mrs. Now, Doubtfire. Now, 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 now. We, best spy. We're basically <laughs> we're going to cut in old scenes from the original Mrs. Doubtfire, but we're going to CGI in Michelle Yeoh's character from Never Say Die or whichever one of those fucking movies she was in. She's going to be like like rappelling down buildings in the background while like Robin Williams is like throwing a lime at uh, Pierce Brosnan's head or something like that. Doesn't uh, isn't. Okay, now correct me if I'm wrong because it's been a while since I've seen that Mission Impossible movie, which, by the way, I, I didn't realize that I'd seen it until I looked up Henry Cavill's IMDb and realized that I remember very briefly seeing it. Very, but, By the way, very true thing about the Mission Impossible movies to... Uh, before we saw the latest Mission Impossible movie, Cliff was telling me how we needed to watch the previous Mission Impossible film because he had never gotten the chance to see it. So I was like, oh, fine. So we went and we watched that, and about 30 minutes into the movie, he goes, I've seen this movie. Yep. Now, I realized I, I thought as hard as I could, hard as I could, have I seen this previous Mission Impossible movie preceding this? No, definitely not. No memories from that. Started watching it mm-hmm. 15 minutes in. 20 minutes in, still not sure, still not sure. Yeah. Then, about 30 minutes in, it occurs to me, oh, wait, I saw this in the theater yeah. without distraction. <laughs> this is what happens just staring if, at the screen. If, if a film is made by someone who always did their math homework and has no insanity in them whatsoever and never took drugs, then that is what you get. A and completely forgettable film full of lots of practical stunts no one remembers. What I'm proposing here is... Isn't aren't we describing the character that Henry Cavill played in that movie? By I don't fucking entire, remember. You think I remember that movie? Didn't he play? Didn't he play some sort of super spy? Oh, sure, sure. But no, the character has nothing to do with it. It's how he's used cinematically. Mm. You see, Henry Cavill's face, if it is, if he is put in poses where he can smolder properly with good lighting, where the story context loads his subconscious. What the audience thinks mm-hmm. is in his subconscious with all sorts of dramatic things. Mm-hmm. Then staring at his head as he stares off, smoldering is awesome. Yeah. St- th- yep. well, Go ahead. He should be the bad guy in John Wick Four. Hmm. hmm. Interesting. All he has to do is get shot at some point and just look menacing. True, but 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 then you wouldn't get to have all sorts of weird, cool foreign action bad guys. I'd much rather see yeah. more Indonesian guys thrown exactly. in there. Exactly. I'd rather see you only know? guys. Yeah, I meant that guy very specifically. With the white guy. Yeah, yeah. Let's try and, I'm yeah, just yeah. trying, guys. Yeah, I don't see, know. See I haven't seen John Wick 3. Yeah, I don't like, know. What I'd like to find out is right now, somewhere in the world, someone's making schlocky, low-rent action somewhere with people who are really talented, and John Wick has done a good job of taking some of those people and actually pushing them into the movie like uh, the guy a lot of the guys from the raid ended up in uh subsequent john wick films so you know that would be rad like like whoever's cool and like henry cavill he's at that stage right now where his face can help art filmmakers get money to make weird shit so he can say look i got a superman face nicholas windy greffin can probably use that to convince someone to give him a million dollars to go make something really crazy so go make that henry cavill then we'll start taking you seriously like for instance 
No one likes Only God Forgives. I don't understand. I, why. I was just about to it's bring a very it up. Difficult film. What it's, is Only God Forgives? It's another Ryan Gosling another movie Ryan with Gosling, Nicholas. Yeah. I've only ever reckon. seen Drive. That's the only. Yes. That's the only Nicholas. Well, this one looked really cool. Yes, watched. it is really awesome. It is very but weird. It is very and it's very antagonistic with how it treats the audience's experience of the character and everything. So I get why some people just don't like it. But it's a very weird and specific and interesting film. But for instance, look at Henry Cavill's face not doing anything. Now I want you to think about how you would think about his face if it immediately followed a scene where he went in and met with a prostitute not to have sex with her but only to make deep eye contact with her while placing his hands inside of her vagina because of a strange relationship he has with his own hands as they relate to his relationship to his oppressive mother who kind of has the hots for him or something. Now that's what's going on in Only God Forgives but it's also yeah, it's all right, man. but it's also about kickboxing, okay? So, and it's also about gangster murder and lots of brutal gangster murder. So all these That's things all are I happening. Out of it was gangster murder. So when you, so when you put, then cut to his face and, and you got that green light over here and that red light over here. So mm-hmm. it's all like bleh on his fucking <laughs> angled face. And you know he's thinking about that shit because that's what you just had to fucking see in the previous scene. Suddenly that face is going to have a lot more going on below the eyes. I'm just saying, go do that, Henry Cavill. Mm. I don't understand the movie you just described. Dude, we <laughs> should watch it. We should watch it with you guys telling me what I should be thinking during it. Because when I watched it, I was, <laughs> I was I don't like, know. no, I want to drive. I want to drive yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. This is well, I think this that's is. I think that's what a lot of people I think that yeah, that what that filmed and I'll I'll save you some time and, and maybe this will make people more interested in seeing it. It's a it is a film that because it is a gangster film. I'd say it's somewhat similar to a film like No Country for Old Men, except it's even more antagonistic with the audience and how it resolves the film in in that it's about deliberately denying the audience things that it wants to see so that they're forced to seek answers in other aspects of the film. We actually recently watched all of uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion recently and made it all the way to the end of that, which does a similar thing with its final episodes where it doesn't even resolve the story. It just goes to total abstraction in the final episodes where it's weird... I don't know. It's just fucking weird. So uh, I couldn't make it past the first episode of that that series, and I was oh, really into oh, anime. Dude. I was like super oh, into anime. Watch watch I watched that. one episode, and I was like, I cannot fucking stand. Oh, I the hate, show. Dude, I fucking hate anime. But you gotta, yeah, yeah, you gotta I, stick I'd with never it. watch anime either. But dude, I was fucking dialed in after those first couple episodes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it gets real weird fantastic. and real smart yeah. and real cool. I promise. It's terrifying and weird and, and interesting. But. Only God Forgives, same thing. By virtue of the fact that it's a gangster film, by virtue of the fact that it's a um, a martial arts film, we make a lot of assumptions about who the character is, what his capabilities are, and where the film will resolve. And it does not deliver any of those things. It instead delivers something else. Uh, and uh, and yeah, so it's a, it's a weird one. And it has some extreme content in it, but it's good uh, and stuff. I like Damn. it. All so. right, I'm going to have to go back and give it another yeah. shot. Because all I remember is this Ryan Gosling getting the shit beat out of him for yes. like the entire movie. Yes. Pretty much. Yeah. And like you like think he's going to get better and then it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. Speaking yeah. of extreme content, uh, The Boys Season 2 is starting up next month. I know. Month. Oh, we shit. need to actually watch the first season. You should watch now. the first yeah. season. Because yeah. the are dropping the ball. The, yeah. The trailer for the second season has a just smattering of vicious violence, <laughs> including... Characters getting their heads ripped from like lower jaw to upper jaw yeah. in half. Yeah, I love uh, to see that. The, That's the Samson move. One of the characters mm. pushes his own child off of a roof in the trailer. This is a, nah. the trailer. They drive a speedboat into a whale and blow it up. Like like I've not seen the trailer. It's it is so when you're talking like extreme content. It is so fucking over the top Fantastic. and violent. I'm pretty sure they show a character dying, right? Like, I thought they showed one of the guys dying. I don't remember. Probably no, the dolphin guy. I don't think he dies. The fish maybe, fucker. maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, you, you honestly, I can't believe you guys haven't seen the boys yet. You no. should watch it. I know. Well, it's, uh, we are. Big, uh, Seth Rogen produces that, right? In I have no idea. Way, right? Uh, I think he's somehow involved. But uh, the, I want to watch that. Yeah. Like the, the entire the entire setup of it is that the main character's girlfriend is killed by mm-hmm. a a superhero that's kind of like the Flash 
as mm. he speeds through her and evaporates her entire existence. Mm -hmm. And he's left holding, the main character's left holding her hands and covered in her teeth and blood. <laughs> and that's the that's the start of the fucking entire series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It All is right. we'll have to watch it then. Fantastic. What? What? Okay, give me give me something more here because I think there's the, violence. The, the, but the, what? what? I, I think that the sour taste that's been left, Cliff, perhaps is is us just not having enjoyed the Watchmen movie or anything related to that, and we're just tired of dark. Yeah, it's superhero not dark things. It's not whatever, dark so. in that sense. It's yeah. dark, it's cynical. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's dark. I would say it's really fucking cynical. Mm. Yeah, the entire thing is about a corporation mm -hmm. where it's like the Justice League, but they're. Public. Not just mm. the Justice League, they they're also movies. a product. They're it's basically like, Disney. They're basically yeah. Disney. If the superheroes were real. They're Disney, they're private security contractors, mm -hmm. and they're superheroes, mm -hmm. and they're above the law because yeah. no one can stop them. And it, it kind of is like a cynical take on what happens when you corporatize word. that existence. Word, word, word. So it's like mystery men. What the hell is mystery men? <laughs> yeah, no the, uh, is. Ben Stiller. William H Macy, '90s superhero movie. Paul Rubens. Paul Janine Rubens Garofalo. was in it. Jeanine Garofalo. Uh, listen, if you can't, if you can't make it through the first episode and yeah, think, yeah. you know what, I'm really interested to see what happens to Huey and what happens to Billy, yeah, yeah. then what is it on again? HBO, is it Amazon, on? Amazon. Okay, I'll watch. So I know there. for a fact you have access. We to do. It. We, we do. love the Amazon Prime. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is great. Yes. It is really good. The cast of characters is great. Free, Everyone's free really cloud. weird. Bezos, yeah. you can pay us later. Yes, I think the new Seth Rogen um, movie, the Pickle movie, is out on HBO now. I think we can actually watch. Yeah, that. maybe. Yes, so an American Pickle. That. Yes. Mm -hmm. And have you watched the Teton Games yet, uh, mm -hmm. Armin? No, I have not. Okay, we watched the resolution of the yeah, Teton Games. I hear uh, the, the championship. Uh, Matt, Matt Chan. Chan and Danny Spiegel won. They That's did. Right. Congratulations they did. to them. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is so interesting to see them try and make so much hay of those people after they so thinly characterized them up to that point because other people had elaborate backstories with you know dead relatives or strange careers and all this and then they had Danny Spiegel in there as social media influencer and Matt Chan as former firefighter and they just kept trying to make like just they every episode they were like we we're expecting this guy to fall off early we had the guy who bit the sun and the whatever and so they kept playing these pre-tapes things over and over again where Danny Spiegel was like, yeah, it's been a long, hard road, this social media influencing. And I ever knew if that road was ever going to pay off. But here I am at the Titan Games, my long, Wrecking hard shop. road of... <laughs> Yeah, and it was so. If you can ignore that shit, it was fun to see those guys uh, uh, run around and uh, dominate. Yeah, and it's also, yeah, it's it's uh, good to know that in a field, ultimately a pretty wide field of CrossFit dads and garage gym folks and professional athletes yeah. in various sports, that the three CrossFitters in the competition among there were three CrossFitters in competition, and two of them got the top two spots. So what you're basically telling me mm -hmm. is that The Rock's Titan Games actually was the venue within which Greg Glassman's original purpose of the CrossFit Games was, was demonstrated. Was demonstrated. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, CrossFitters will kick the shit out of professional athletes Pretty much. in a variety of tasks. I mean, it's it been demonstrated. It is, despite the fact that they're not actually able to, to to reference CrossFit at any point. Yeah, it really is that. It is the it is proof of that. And not, and and Matt uh, Chan was the oldest person in the competition by a wide margin. At the end, they tried to say like, as the oldest competitor, I'm like, you guys didn't shoot anything around that. You guys are fucking improvising now to try and give him a story uh they're like at 42 years old but a 42 year old matt chan was uh was unstoppable out there and of course but and here's the other thing just like the crossfit games just like anything else it all comes down to bad programming and and chaos and equipment design at the end because at the end it was margo alvarez versus danny spiegel oh shit they're going hard against each other they're racing and it gets down they decide we're gonna add a couple little because they're they're running the same. The one thing that sucks about the show is they're running the same obstacle race, obstacle course every episode. The climax oh, really? every episode is the exact same thing, over and over again. I guess because American Ninja Warrior is a, that people like that. Huh. I don't fucking know. But the point is, at the end, they decide to add to spice things up a little bit. They add like a foam wall that they have to break through on one side and the other. It's it's dumb. So they add a foam wall. So. uh Danny Spiegel runs into this foam wall. It's clearly like kind of tough to get through. She has to get on her back. She kicks through this foam wall. It's tough. Margot Alvarez runs at that thing, does not break it, 
probably just poorly designed such that hers was even harder to get through and that's where her cro- her titan games ended <laughs> danny spiegel then just walked through the rest of the course this was relatively early on while margo alvarez was just stuck like just after a certain point with her hands on her hips just like kicking at this foam wall that wouldn't break and this and that is how the the women's oh, competition the, ended. Yeah, we forgot to cut oh, that. Oh fuck! Part. We gave you a we gave you a real wall. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Damn, I'm sure sorry. it was something that was Damn put it. in. They didn't quite figure it out. They didn't quite nail it because it was new. Uh, and then, at least with the Matt Chan competition, the other guy made it through the wall, and consequently, like there was some kind of a competition between the two of them. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, spoiled. Damn, dude. Well, thank you to The Rock, I guess, yeah. for proving uh, CrossFit's dominance. I know. I'm sure that The Rock will publicly acknowledge Greg Glassman's contribution to uh, his empire and his legacy, which is so important to The Rock. I his agree. legacy. Yeah. Uh, and because legacy is so important, he will want to honor Greg Glassman's legacy publicly and loudly. Yes. Our legacy. Yes. Legacies that involve things like starring in movies and using those movies to pay for failing tequila businesses. <laughs> Legacy. Ouch. That's right. I'm coming for you, the fucking rock. All right. I well, I guess that's a good enough place <laughs> as any to stop. Thanks so much, uh, gentlemen. All right. Uh, I am uh, at Mr. Kyle Bogart on a currently inactive social media account. Hell yeah. I am at Cliff Bogart on an occasionally active Instagram account, and I am a fan of Dan Aykroyd's brand of tequila. Anyway, yeah. Because it has a crystal skull. It's vodka, oh, that's vodka. Though. Oh, vodka? Oh, yeah. well, fuck it. You guys liquor, have been all out of, the same liquor. We've been, been out of the drinking here. game for way too long. Too many years. Looking at them, not drinking them. Yes, mm-hmm. that's right. I'm at Chase504 on Instagram. You can find me there. And I'm at Arm and Hammer TV. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching and listening. We'll catch you next time. Take care. Later. Later. Yeah.